Hey guys, Josh here. I host the HVAC Guide for Homeowners YouTube channel, and I wanted to do it this video. If I were to call it anything, I would call it the three mistakes homeowners make when they're researching HVAC. We help folks on our website, New HVAC Guide, all the time, and sometimes I have to when I'm helping them, if they sign up for one of the packages where we actually help them, a lot of times I've realized I've have to re-educate them or kind of fix their thinking on a few things before we can actually help them. Because they've read something on the internet or researched the heating and air brand or system without getting some hard facts. So again, this video, we're gonna call it the three mistakes that consumers make when they're researching HVAC. Number one, I see this one probably more than any other, so I'm gonna start with that, and that is we see consumers that are focusing way too much on the brands. They'll be searching things like who's the best brand. They'll go to these websites that have like the top 10 brands ranked, not realizing that a lot of those lists are flawed because they'll have the same exact companies, it's different stickers, different brands, but they'll have a company that's number one and five, it's the same stuff. So a lot of those lists are garbage anyway. That's, that's not a riddle, that's, that's just terrible. I think just like anything in this world, I think if you were to look up Walmart, you'd probably find some good things on the internet said about Walmart, and you'd probably find some bad things on the internet said about Walmart. I think you could probably say that about religion. You could probably look up Jesus, and you could find some bad things written about Jesus, and you could find some good things written about Jesus. And the same goes for heating and air brands. For us, we're a Daikin dealer at my company. I think they're amazing. I can usually tell my customers if they ask, I can rattle off 10 reasons in a lot of cases why I think they're the best for us to sell to them. But I'm not so naive to think if you live in a market that Daikin doesn't have a good supplier to you, you would be crazy to go buy what I sell or what somebody said on the internet, especially one of those lists that they rank one through 10. The thing you need to be focusing on is finding a good contractor. Don't worry about the brand yet. Find that contractor that gives you the warm fuzzies that you want to have a long-term relationship with, that you want to spend your money with, and then go with the brand that they would recommend you. Go with the brand that they stand behind and believe in. Now I'll even go one step further and say, if you have a contractor that doesn't feel that way about a certain brand, if they're one of those contractors that say, well, just tell me what brand you want and, and I'll get it for you. Me personally, I wouldn't want that. If I would want a company that says, no, 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 you gotta get this brand. Even if you don't hire me, this is the one that we think is great for these reasons, Go with this. This is what we think you should go with. That's what you want. Number two, for mistakes that people make when researching HVAC, and that is they don't take a closer look at how efficient systems are. A lot of folks, they'll be getting prices, they'll get the lowest price they can, not realizing if they spent just a little bit more money, they could get a higher efficiency system, saving them money on their utility bills. I just think it's one of the biggest mistakes that people make. And I know there's contractors out there that are still to this day only install the lowest quality, lowest efficiency of systems, and they'll even argue with you and tell you why. But I can tell you this, that over the next decade, you're gonna see a large transition in this industry to the point where you probably won't even see single stage systems and maybe even multi-stage systems. It's gonna be mostly all inverter. The USA is very behind on this. If you were to go to other continents in this world, they are almost strictly 100% inverter systems in some cases. For us, being a Daikin dealer, Daikin has some of the most efficient systems out there, and because of that, I don't think I would be doing my customer a good service if I were to try to sell them something lower end when I can at least offer these systems that are top of the line, that'll save them money, that are super reliable, they come with amazing warranties. And a lot of these guys that won't sell you a higher end system will a lot of times try to scare you and tell you that the repair costs are significantly higher, but they always avoid the big one. And the big one is the compressor. A compressor replacement with some companies can be thousands of dollars. I can tell you this, that Daikin has products on the market that if the compressor were to fail any time in the 12 years after it was installed, they would give you a whole new system, not just the compressor, an entirely new unit. The reason they offer that is because they don't hardly fail at all. That's what a lot of these guys that say, oh, well, the repair costs are so high on these higher end systems. They like to point out how more expensive the variable speed motors are, but they never talk about the compressors because in my career, I can tell you, I have only ever had to replace one 
inverter compressor. And you might say, well, Josh, you haven't been doing it very long. Well, I just took a class last week where they talked about the failure rate that Daikin has on their inverter compressors. And I don't know how accurate the number is, so I'm not even gonna say what the number was, but I can tell you it was well below 1%. That of all the 18 million systems that they've sold in North America, that it was less than 1% failure rate on those compressors. So again, I think you're doing yourself a disservice when you're researching heating and air if you aren't at least getting quotes on a higher end, more efficient system. And then finally, number three of mistakes that we see consumers make when they're researching HVAC, and that is they don't listen to their local pro. And what I mean by that is we will see folks all the time that will read something on the internet. Where'd you hear that? The internet. And you believed it. Yeah. They can't put anything on the internet that isn't true. Here's something I said in a video or go by something their brother-in-law who went to school to be a heat and air tech but never actually made it a career but he thinks he knows everything and they'll take advice from all these other places rather than taking advice from the contractor that's standing in their home that can give them advice who does this every day in their area. Now I'm not saying you should listen to absolutely everything that any and all contractors say when they come in your home but I would ask them questions. I would get their input, even if they don't earn my business. I would say, listening to them, maybe they'll tell you why you should stay away from this or that, why they recommend what they recommend, and so on. A lot of times you might actually avoid a pitfall just by asking some of those questions instead of going by what's on the internet. So anyway, that's my big three. Hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.